Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we would do a walkthrough of my garden. It is beginning of June, so I wanted to compare the next couple months and see how everything grows. So come along with us. Okay, so over here on each side of the big trellis here in the middle, we created these teepees for the kids. So the plants that I used are called Black Eyed Susan. And as you can see, they are starting to climb up the trellis. And in a few weeks, they are going to hopefully fill in the whole thing and it will be like a big teepee for the two kids. And here is TP number two. Um, TP number two definitely has a lot more flowers on it. Um, it seems like they're either orange or yellow flowers. They all are just a little bit different. Every few days that we come out here and we're trying to train the vines to climb up. So hopefully that will work. But as you can see, we put the string all the way around, except right here in the front. It doesn't go all the way down and that's how they'll get in and out of the teepee. And then here in the middle, we have a big trellis. We have planted cucumbers on the right over here they are just starting to come up and then on the outside here there's um long beans um i'll have to put up a picture but the beans are like a foot long when they actually start growing and then over here we have peas this is the vine that I got but they don't vine very far um, they just vine a couple inches and next on each side of the pathway we have quite a few cabbages they are all looking really good And then we planted a cherry tomato on each side here by the kids' teepee so they have something to snack on while we're harvesting. And these four guys are all broccoli. We had a really harsh spring here and they are a little wonky. Um, I'm thinking they got lightly frozen, but they'll be just fine. I'm gonna bring in a fence post I think and kind of prop them up just a little bit and then next we have eggplant as you can see my eggplant are being eaten alive by aphids um, I actually am planning on spraying them today my stuff finally arrived um, I was all out but they'll come back and they'll be fine and then next I have four bush bean plants then we have some zucchini and then here on the other side of the garden we have tons of different kinds of peppers they're still very tiny um, I do think it's because of the weird spring we had usually they really take off but it's been so dry warm and then cold warm and then cold they just haven't thrived um, I have been watering the garden this week and as you can see they've gotten a little bit bigger. And then we have tomato plants. There's a ton of them outlying the garden here. So uh, that's about the only thing I have left to do. I actually will come in and put cattle panels on each side of the tomato and then they kind of grow up in between them and that supports them. I hate tomato cages. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like 
when you actually need the tomato cage, the tomato cage fails. So definitely has been my way. But yeah, they're getting big and these guys are even laying down on the plastic. So I need to get them off. And then this year, I decided to try my hand at flowers. I have never really grown cut flowers, um, but this winter I had the extra free time, so we started everything indoors, and this is what we're left with. So I'm gonna take out my cheat sheet so we can talk about everything. So these guys up in here are actually basil. And they smell like cinnamon. It's really interesting. And then here in front are sage. You can see they have really cute little flowers. And I do need to come through and pinch some of these yet. And then all of these big ones here are Larkspur. The darn sun's making me have shadows. Sorry about that, guys. You can see these guys are just beautiful flowers. But these are the same thing. I need to get through here this week and pinch some things. And then these bottom two layers are just kind of random stuff. But up in here are all Cosmos. I'm kind of irritated with these. Um, they were supposed to be a lot taller. Um, I specially ordered them. But as you can see, they're definitely not going to get super tall. Um, but hopefully they get a little bit bigger so we can at least use them for some flower arrangements in the house. They have really really pretty flowers. I have some orange. Um, there's some lighter orange. This one here actually has orange and yellow leaves and then there's some solid yellows. It's kind of neat that there's just a mix of them. And then up in here are sunflowers. The cold again killed off some of them so we actually replanted some within the last couple days so hopefully there will be two big huge rows here of sunflowers here in a couple weeks and we have watermelon starting to pop up see we have a whole row of that and then we have a whole row of cantaloupe. And up here is also cantaloupe. And there's a couple of random watermelon ones in there too. And then we have different varieties of squash. And then one more row of squash. And then at my mother-in-law's we're actually planting like the pumpkins and such but the way we designed it this year is these three four five rows will have they're all viney plants and you hate to weed between them so with the fabric down i'm hoping that that will cut down on our weeding right now we only have weeds on the seams we ended up putting dirt just to make sure that the wind would stay off of it and not tear up the plastic. And then here, my field of weeds. Does anybody else's garden look like this? <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to show you guys, but you know what, this is real life. I have two kids, it's summer, we're running all the time, and I don't have time to come out here and weed. <laughs> Um, the good news is I actually only need to weed this on down, which isn't actually that bad. Um, this side all the way up to where the plastic ends is actually, there's nothing planted yet. 
We are gonna try our hand at growing popcorn this year. However, it can cross pollinate. So we are waiting for our field corn to get a little ahead. So our plan is to actually plant this maybe next week or the following week. Um, I wanna give it enough time to get ready for harvest and everything, but I definitely don't want it to cross pollinate. If you look way up here on top of the hill, the other side of that pasture, it's all corn. <laughs> so I definitely don't want it to cross pollinate. And as you can see, I'll show you guys here in a little bit too, we have goats and we have horses. I'll show you their cute little pen here in a minute. My ways here we have potatoes and we have radishes and there are carrots in here and we have loads and loads of onions and then I have a window box up by the barn where I have like my lettuce and kale and spinach and that kind of stuff but that's the June garden guys so welcome and here are our friendly goats so this little girl here on the fence is Rosie and the other little girl is Candy they are not related but they do look a lot alike um, they were both bottle fed so they're super super tame my kids are out here playing with them all the time they have a huge area right here by the garden so they are two very happy goats and then then in the winter with our crazy winter weather we actually end up putting them in the barn so they don't have to worry about surviving out here and then the two horses are way up there but we won't be able to get to them today well thanks guys for joining me and like I said we'll be posting another video in the next couple weeks to show you the progression of the garden and I have some makeover series so stay tuned make sure you hit that subscribe button thanks guys